Hello. Here we are again. Taking another drive. And I thought I'd share a little more knowledge. And this time, I'm going to do some teaching. And this time I'm going to talk about something that everyone who is involved in the quantum community has heard but no one that I know except for one person other than myself has closure on and that is the vowel in front of a consonant meaning no hopefully I will help to answer that in this video first of all if you have access to the internet you can find an etymology dictionary and a Latin dictionary Greek dictionary Sanskrit dictionary and you can look these things up yourself and you can parse the words so what you would do is you would parse each syllable of the word and find out the earliest meaning of the word. That's a rule of thumb. That's an etymological rule of thumb that I use. I go to the earliest known meaning of the word, which usually means the pi root, the Proto-Indo-European root. And I go by that. And if you do that, 9.9 .9 times out of 10 you will find that those words that have a vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of the word will mean no. In other words, they literally mean no. They mean go backwards or they mean away from or they negate the now time in some way. That's easy to qualify for yourself. All it takes is time. A deeper closure and clarity that I'll share with you now is that if you were to syntax a word each letter at a time for example if you wrote the word adverb and you wrote a space D space V space E space R space B and you put spaces in between the letters now each letter is going to be syntaxed separately it's not going to be syntaxed as a whole an adverb standing by itself would be a pronoun but when you take those letters and put spaces in there now you have to syntax each letter individually so when you look at the word now all of a sudden a becomes an adverb B becomes an adjective. V becomes a pronoun. E becomes an adverb. R becomes an adjective. And B becomes a pronoun. So in these scenarios, vowels are syntaxed as non-tangible contract words, as non-fact-based terms. Why is that? Well, if you think about it, the sound of a vowel Ah, E, I, O, U. They're verbs because it's basically just thinking. It's motion. There's no concreteness to it. There's no solidity to it. But when you pronounce phonetically a consonant, there's a definite solidity to it, like T, B, V. Therefore, and also the name consonant is very similar to constant. So you syntax vowels as verbs. Verbs are motion thinking. Consonants would be syntaxed as fact-based terms. Keeping that in mind, If you put the thinking in front of the fact, 
you have nothing to think about. You've put the motion before there's something to move. So it negates it because there's no direction. Because in correct sentence structure, in correct sentence structure, you have to have two facts before you have the verb of the thinking. You have to have two points in which to draw a straight line so that you know the direction you're going. You have your cause, your consequence, and then you have your thinking. If you put the thinking before that, now the volition is in question. Now you don't know what direction the line's going. That's why it's a question. That's why the, the thinking comes before it because you're not sure what's going on. Same thing. You're putting the motion before there's something to move. Now if you put a consonant in front of that vowel, now you have something to move. Now you have a starting point. Now you have a fact-based thing to start from into the verb of the thinking into the rest of the word. Another question that people ask, well then why are two vowels in front of a consonant positive performance? Again, I have never heard anyone give closure on that to me except for one person. And as far as I know, no one's ever explained it. So my closure on that is when you take another motion, another thinking, and you put it in front of that thinking, now you have two motions, two thinkings, two thoughts. We'll say thoughts. The very first thought now performs the function of the life force, which now you have something to move into the verb of the thinking, which is the next vowel, and then your consonant, and then whatever comes after that. So in the scenario of two vowels in front of a consonant, the first vowel functions as the source, the life force, the original thinking. The second vowel functions as the verb of the thinking into the rest of the word. You may ask, well, why is that? How did you come to that? Everything comes from the source. It comes down to your sensations. As a very good friend and brother of mine put it to me, to paraphrase, try thinking with a bullet in your head. What do you need to begin thinking? You need a life force. There needs to be life in order for there to be motion or movement or a verb of thinking. If there's no life there, there's no thinking. That's another reason why a vowel in front of a consonant means no. Because there's nothing to think about. But once you put that life force there, and that's why those words with two vowels in front of the consonant are so special. Because they begin with the function of the life source the original thinking moving into the verb of the thinking and then into the rest of the word. And that's why two vowels in front of a consonant are positive performance. These are things that I teach in my workshop that as far as I know have never ever been released to the public. And I'm sharing it with you now. First I'm sharing it in my Facebook group and with the, uh, with the vision of releasing it publicly eventually, but not quite yet. I might actually uh, make a more detailed video using my, my uh, dry erase board and uh, illustrating some of these things with diagrams and whatnot. But that's what I'm with the vision of doing. I hope this has helped everyone out there. And I would like to end the video with a show of gratitude 
honor and love to full colon David hyphen win full colon Miller full colon Russell hyphen J full colon Gould for all that I've learned from them and uh, the part that they played in my life in being where I am now and last but not least I would like to give a very 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 special thanks to a friend a brother and a mentor who's gifted me with so many closures and clarities on these matters and his name is full colon raven hyphen farhad hyphen tohidi full colon afarin much respect brother thank you very much for watching this I know it's a lot to uh, to think about and that's what it's for it's to think about sit and think about it if you have any questions about it I teach these in my this stuff in my workshops it's not something that can be answered at least for me at this point in uh, my tutoring experience it can't be answered in a comment casually in a comment section in a comments field it has to be done face to face so to speak in a, in a video confidential feeding uh, video setting I'm also with the vision of perhaps beginning group sessions which I might be rolling that out later on this year but I'm with the vision of doing that like teaching maybe instead of just one-on-one -on -one doing two or three or four people at one time but we'll see how it goes because I don't want the quality of the material and the amount of material that, I, that I'm uh, transshipping to each student to suffer in those scenarios because it does the more people that are involved it gets kind of you're not sure what what's being conveyed to each person or what's what each person is allowing to come into their port and dock in their psyche so to speak thank you for watching I hope you liked it and I hope it helped and I hope everyone has a blessed day thank you for your membership goodbye now